Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and our special guest today is Ed Holloway, a state representative. How you doing, Ed? Just fine, fine. We were going to have a gentleman from Ireland call in today, but he, so far he hadn't called in, but he's, he believes in American exceptionalism. When I think of that, I think our Declaration of Independence says our rights come from God. Exactly. And not from the government. And it's the one nation under God, and it has been, and that was the foundation of every aspect of the Founding Fathers. This man in Ireland says that's not the way it is in Ireland. No. He says the answer to every problem there is more and more government. Right. Socialism, totally. Yeah. I was interested in doing that and hearing what he had to say. I think that's an important part of American exceptionalism is that we believe our freedom of speech and all of these freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, freedom to petition the government, all of those things come from God, and they can't take it away from them, even though they're trying very hard to take it away now. And that's one of the reasons that Christianity and every other form of, and the Catholic Church particularly, are under attack by the left. Yeah. It's it's increasing, and they're doing it every step of the way with every institution. The education has been banning religious comments, any prayer in schools, on the football field, the basketball court, anywhere else. And then the, the military now, and they even took it out of the Air Force Academy's oath that they moved the term in God from their oath. Oh, really? Exactly. When did they do that? Uh, that was just, just fairly recently. For example, you can no longer take a Bible or, or yeah. speak it, and then they try to do that to the veterans' hospitals and yes. all that. Chaplains in the military yeah. are under attack. Well, now, that was under Obama, wasn't it? Exactly, but those things, once they get into put in, into regulations and into force, it, it's like, unscrambling an egg. And this is one of the things that the Trump administration has literally a a basket full of things that have been undone. We're just now discovering more and more of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's worse than we ever imagined. Now, well, of course, there's a lot of this going on. But a couple of weeks ago, there was a group in Berkeley, California, and they said, no Trump, no wall, no USA at all. That's kind of amazing that people in America are against America. Well, that was another classic thing. When you, if you look at this, the video of that attack. Yeah. One of the people in the lead was a CNN reporter. Oh my goodness! And this is going back to what we've talked about before: the three areas where they have been able to infiltrate everything and it becomes a new secondary government. Oh, yeah. And that is the media, the academic community, the Hollywood. All of these celebrities that don't know anything about anything have been converted into a total socialistic concept of everything. Anti-America. Was that in the one a couple of weeks ago in Berkeley? Yes, that, yes. Yeah, how did you find sure. out that one of those guys was a CNN reporter? I forgot the Blaze. Yeah. So was the one that reported and, and showed oh. that video. Really? This is not anything that comes through the general media. No. And they will not mention it. That's because they've been bought and paid for by the left-wingers. Exactly. Now, we have a video of that rally where they're yelling this, and I think everybody everybody ought to get a copy of that video. It's only about 20 seconds long or so because people are not going to believe that there are students or young people or reporters that are saying they want to do away with America. So we would like to send this to everyone listening to the program today. We just need you to call the line for free materials. The number is 895-5025. 895-5025. There's an answering machine. And you can call right now and leave your name, address, phone number, and if possible, your email address so that we can send you alerts that are what's going on in, in Washington. So if you could right now, call that number, 895-5025, and we will get you a free copy of that DVD. The other thing we'd like to send out is this DVD. It's of The Life of Jesus. And it's free, too. It's about 
the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. And then it has an invitation on there, too. And the important thing about this video, it's in 24 different languages. Right. So when we go down to pray on Taylor Boulevard, there are quite a few Somali people. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the languages on right. here. So if you would like a copy of this, just mention that when you call in the request line, which is 895-5025, and you can call right now. So those two DVDs are important that we'd like to give you. And of course, we have the Jesus bumper sticker that you may have seen around town. And really, everybody ought to have that because that's the name that makes the lame to walk. Hallelujah. The other thing we'd like to do is, he says, America has changed the world for over 240 years. I guess that's true. Now, he's been on Blaze Radio. Yes, yes. Yeah, Jonathan Dunn has is, is, is been a promoter of America for a long time. Really? How long? He looks at it from the standpoint that this is the only bastion of freedom left in the world is the United States. Really? And it's under attack. And he calls the idea of America and, and the concept that built this country, one nation under God, and the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights are all based primarily on freedom. And yeah. every aspect of freedom, and the real freedom, traditionally, always defeated tyranny. Yeah. And this is what the, our founding fathers recognized. They had been very well versed in what was going on in Europe and had been under the rulers of the kings and other dictators and other things. And they said, that's the one thing we have to avoid in this country. And the French and the French Revolution missed that concept. So we've got a thing about him, and he can look at it from a perspective of somebody who admires the United States and wants to become a member and to become a citizen of the United States because of all of the principles on which this country was founded. I was just thinking as you're talking, one nation under God and all these freedoms that we say are given to us from God. And the thing is, God is the only one that's strong enough to keep them. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. If it was you and me, trying to provide all of these freedoms, it wouldn't, it would, we wouldn't no. be able to do it. Collective. But God is strong enough where he can do it. That's tremendous. And I don't know if Jonathan's going to be able to show up today or not. But in any case, I think you're doing a good yeah. job. Well, I hope, I hope that he is because he looks at it from a clean perspective without any of the contamination that's caused by the media and everything else that's been going on right. for, for the last 50 years. You look back at, at Berkeley. Berkeley is a classic example and has been since the 60s. That was the foundation of the citizens that created all of the weathermen, the attacking oh, and all that, yeah. and the SDS, Students for a Democratic Society. And it's still going on today. And they keep trying to revise that and make that a, their focal point. And that's a bastion that's How long there has for long Jonathan time. been on the air and talking about these things? Well, I don't know, quite a, it's several a few years. years, several years. Okay, we run out of time. We'll be right back after this commercial. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. Okay, we're back again. We're talking about American exceptionalism. He's in, in this printout I got from Jonathan. It says that there's hope. America has hope. Well, this is a classic thing about exceptionalism. That's what people that were wanting to come to America traditionally have looked at the exceptionalism that you as an individual, not part of a collective. Yeah. And this is the key thing that it was. And what I can think of in modern times is that one of the best examples that I've seen in a long time was the exceptionalism that when took place when the hurricane uh, that hit Houston. And, yeah. And Harvey. Yeah. Harvey hit, and then people came out of nowhere. They the, help each other. Cape Town, they were, and it was it was a traditional example of American exceptionalism. 
And the same thing is going on <laughs> in Florida. Good. All the volunteers and others. Yeah. And they called the group out coming out of Louisiana with their boats and yeah. all that. Yeah. They showed up. Nobody asked them to or anything else. They just saw the need, and they, they took their boats and headed for Houston. And they did a tremendous job of rescuing hundreds of people. And all of those things were going on long before the government or anybody else took a look at it. They were already out there. The volunteers were there, and the same thing is going on in Florida. I've got some friends that we came up here, and they've been staying yeah. in, in Louisville, and they're going back tomorrow. Oh, and wow. All of these things that are going on is that people took it, uh, you know, the opportunity to help a friend and a neighbor and other. And the yeah. Crew. It was a traditional example of American exceptionalism. This is what's been hidden by the media and the other forces in America today that uh, we don't talk about that. We want to all be part of a one world order. Yeah. And this utopia that they've so With the government they, running exactly. the show. Someone told me that the news media didn't show much of these volunteers coming no, out to help no. everybody. They didn't. But if you look closely, and this is a thing that people have to do, is to become more aware of what you're looking at and then analyze it. Who is this and why is this? Because this is what the things they've been trying to become your own brain. They tell you what to think, how to think. Oh, yeah. All the other things. And this is the thing that is, they're attempting to destroy and make everybody subservient to the one world government. Absolutely. I want to mention one more time that we have this DVD that we'd like to send you on the people in Berkeley, California, saying no Trump, no wall, no USA at all. Now, can you imagine that? I, I was shocked when I heard that. I couldn't believe it, that there are people in America, I guess George Soros is funding a lot of them. Exactly. And incidentally, with George Soros, Judicial Watch has filed yeah. a lawsuit against George Soros to yeah. expose some of these things. And that will be a, an interesting court case. Wow, because that is tremendous. Behind. And the, the ironic thing about Soros and you have to know his background and everything else. And the, yeah. The assistance he gave the Nazis in rounding up yeah. Jewish people on and on. I won't go into all that. But in that process, he funds both sides of some of these violent activities. The extreme, Just to cause trouble. Extreme left and extreme right. And he's financing both sides. And this is something people don't know. He creates these massive demonstrations and all that. And it's a little bit like I mentioned earlier, what went on in Berkeley in the 60s when the Students for Democratic Society engaged on wild violence and set-ins and burnings yeah. and all the other things. Wow. And after that experience at the Democratic Convention in, in Chicago, they were rounded up at a lot of things. They found out and they decided that this aspect is not working. This is when they decided to go into the media, into academia, all of those things. Yeah. And they had a national meeting to all the chapters around the country, and this is where we're going to need to go. We need to go into politics. We need to go into the media. Yeah. And all of those things. And they've taken their time, and they were very willing, and they're patient enough to, to make it to happen. And whatever it takes, patience has been a part of their aspect, that we will get this eventually. We'll get this in one step at a time. So this is where they are today, and they're now feeling the extent of their power. They're reaching out, and they're thinking, oh, we, we were close to the, the inevitable collapse of the United States. And yeah. this is exactly what that statement is about. Down well, I think it's inevitable that America is going to turn back to God. I think that's in, inevitable. Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm really enthused by what I've seen and with the outcome in, in the Houston yeah. and in, in Texas again in Florida, and it's every aspect of it. And there's a lot of the Christian churches and others that have yes. been a very important role in that, and they're still doing it. Yes. Southeast Christians just have a semi full of supplies going Wonderful. down to Florida. This is one example of hundreds that are taking place all over the United States. Now, someone told me this morning that there was a similar situation, bad situation, in St. Louis. Exactly. Last night or something. Well, there was a big demonstration again because a police officer who had shot an individual who was running and trying to escape, high-speed chase. Oh, He brother. was involved in drug deals and all that, and he was killed ultimately. 
by a police officer. Yeah. And he was armed with a thirty eight. They said, oh, the, the officer planted that gun on him. Oh, yeah, the officer planted the gun. Exactly. And he's, That's he's crazy. He's guilty of murder. You know, back in the old days, the policeman said, stop or I'll shoot. Right. They meant it. Exactly. And if you don't stop, then you guess what? Right. You get shot. And this is another thing I saw all over with the, the, the damage that has been done, the riots and other things. Don't loot, we shoot. And yeah. this is true because Florida has a law that allows the individual to hone a weapon and defend his own property. And they put these things up in front of their destructed houses and say, don't loot, we shoot. Yeah. And there's some of them that actually have set up a neighborhood watch with 24-hour security. Well, that's what they need. And this is exactly because you're starting to see some of these breaking into these stores and other things in some of these disaster areas. Yeah. And all of that rioting and that's taking place. When somebody's been in trouble, that's not the time to go and steal their whatever's left. Exactly. Don't forget to get this DVD where the people are saying no Trump, no wall, no USA at all. The Jesus video and the Jesus bumper sticker. All these things are free. Just call 895-5025. 895-5025. You can call right now and leave your name and phone number on the answering machine. And if you can, the email address. That's 895-5025. And you can call right now. We're talking about American exceptionalism and Jonathan Dunn from Ireland, who has been on the Blaze Radio for a while and is talking about that. I don't know if we're going to get him today or not, but we got Ed Holloway who's filling in and saying everything good. Learning out of time, we've got to go stop for another station break, but there's a lot on here that we need to talk about, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. You know, Ed, the other thing that's going on right now is that Judge Roy Moore, what they call the Ten Commandments judge, is running for the U.S. Senate seat in Alabama to take the place of Jeff Sessions, who was moved into the U.S. Attorney General's spot. And so they're having a runoff uh, election September 26th to see who's going to take the Senate seat vacated by Jeff Sessions. Roy Moore, Judge Roy Moore, is the judge that was fired, even though he was the chief judge on the Alabama Supreme Court. They fired him because he supported the Ten Commandments and put the statue of the Ten Commandments right. up in the courtyard. Well, they fired him, and then he got reelected, and he went back to be the chief judge of the Alabama Supreme Court. And then the U.S. Supreme Court says, oh, yeah, we're going to have homosexual marriages. Well, he says, well, you know what? That's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration of Independence, not in the Bill of Rights. So he wrote a letter to all the judges in Alabama saying, well, we've got a law in Alabama that says we don't accept homosexual marriage, and you don't have to accept them either. Wow. So that really blew the lid off the left wingers and they fired him again. Now he's running for the U.S. Senate. Now, if there's anything the U.S. Senate needs, it's a Judge Moore to go up there and drain the swamp. Exactly, because he's one of the examples of a person who is not intimidated at all behind yes. by the left wing threats. Here's the puncher. Mitch McConnell is backing the establishment candidate, and is working against Judge Moore. Exactly. Here it is, Alabama, but our Mitch McConnell is working against Judge Moore. So I happen to have Mitch McConnell's number, and I'd like to give it to you, and you can call him and tell him to please back Judge Moore and not the establishment candidate. Now, if you call this number right now, it turns out that so many people have already called it that it's filled up the answering machine. So I just called it, and it's full. So you may have to call back either later today or Monday. 
And Mitch McConnell's number here in Louisville is 582-6304. So if you want to jot that down and give Mitch McConnell's office a call, leave a message for him, that number again is 582-6304. You can call it now, but I think it's full. I just called it. His answer machine is full. So you may have to wait till Monday. But it's a good thing to do is to call that number and ask Mitch to back Judge Moore. And to... So it's a lot of money floating around. So call Mitch at 582-6304. 582-6304. Five eight two sixty three zero four. Now, if you want, you can make an announcement in church tomorrow and tell them what's going on. But Judge Moore is up for election for the U.S. Senate in Alabama, and Mitch McConnell is working against him. And so, you just call Mitch's number and ask him to work for the Judge Moore. And his Mitch McConnell's number is five eight two sixty three zero four. It's the old story. If we just sit back and do nothing, things are going to get worse. But if we all work together, we're invincible, and we can get Judge Moore in the U.S. Senate. Together under God, we are unbeatable. So write that number down, 582-6304, and let's get the Ten Commandments judge back into uh, power in the U.S. Senate, we can do it. So give him a call whenever you can get on the answering machine and tell everybody at church tomorrow to call and support Judge Roy Moore. Okay, we got a break and be right back. Okay, we're back again. Uh, Rick, are you still there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Ed okay, wants to if, say where he he uh, got that information. So, Ed, go ahead. Well, there was a there was a black professor, and I cannot remember his name, but I, he was one saying that the numbers that we have had the influx of people, even from Nigeria several decades ago, and others that have come into this country and assimilated. There are certain parts of the country, yes, they were the major, over, majority, overwhelmingly, are descendants of slaves. But other areas that would just it'd become a minority, like Jefferson County, for example, is a mixed bag. Yeah, we've got so many, we've had so many bring come in here from other parts of the country, Nigeria and others. I, I live in I live in Louisville, been born and raised here, and and I know what's in my neighborhood. I know what's in my city. The majority of black people in the city of Louisville are are, are African Americans. Now they there may be a, some some assimilation of people where there's been marriages into the families and so forth like that. But that does, uh, that does not take away the, you know, the, 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 just because you marry an African does not make you no longer American or your children no longer uh, descendants of slaves. We're, when, in, in, in 1965, we were estimated between 14 to 16% of the population. Now we're not that high a popular percentage, but we're somewhere around in, in the in the mid thirties in population, thirty thirty percent, thirty not thirty not not thirty percent. We're about twelve percent now, but we're like somewhere over thirty million of us are African American. Now, you know, sure, you know, there's like I said, there's been some assimilation, but we didn't disappear. You know, I'm still here. I had six kids, fourteen and fourteen grandchildren. You know, this idea that the majority of black people nowadays are not descendants of slaves, I don't care if it came from a black man. He's a liar. And, um, uh, uh, you know, you, you can you can quote that if you want. But there are a lot of people who are running around for various political reasons rewriting history. And you know that. Yeah. And you, Rick, you know, I know a lot of people that have come into United States from Africa, maybe they are slaves in other countries, and they came to America because of the freedom. Right. Yeah, so, but, that, but that they don't outnumber those of us who were born here. I don't know. It would know, take a lot of research to prove that. Of, yeah, a lot of things have changed. The, the demographics of everything has changed so radically in the last 50, 60 years. 
Yeah. Uh, it's hard to really put a handle. You can take almost any angle. And, and the, the thing is that, that America has been the one place of exceptionalism for all people, regardless of your background, your history, or right. anything else. Right. And that's the key thing we have to concentrate on. Not on the fact that we were historically this. And if you look at the, at the, at 1860, there was not a single Republican that was founded in, in Ripon, Wisconsin. Not a single Republican in America owned a slave. Or really? They were, were opposing slavery and all that. We're all Republican. Yeah. So they end up supporting uh, Abraham Lincoln, electing him. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Let me just re- repeat this. If you would like this DVD about people saying they want to do away with America, no USA. Or you want this DVD on Jesus that's in 24 languages. Or you want the Jesus bumper sticker. Give us a call right now at 895-5025. 895-5025. Right now, and we'll get that out. Uh, you can call now and leave your information on the answering machine, your name, your address, your phone number, and your email address so that we can send you updates from Washington. You can call that right now, 895-5025. Okay, so don't forget to call Mitch McConnell's office, 582-6304, and ask him to please back Judge Moore. Need everybody to make that phone call. The answering machine is full now, but uh, calling back tomorrow or Monday, you'll probably get through and be able to leave your message on his answering machine. We're going to have to go now. Thank Ed Holloway for being with us. And tremendous job again, as always. And we'll see you next week for the rest of the news. Reasons that we are celebrating today. That includes those that are down there on the floor, those that are in the upper level and the upper level above that, those that are in the back that we can barely even see, poured into this place that are spilling down the hallways. If you are grateful, if you are appreciative of the men and women who make up the legislature, the House and the Senate, the men and the women who you sent here in November to do your will, and the will that they did among others was to pass legislation that the people of Kentucky have demanded for a long, long time. If you are truly grateful to the members of our House and the members of our Senate who are the ones responsible for this legislation, please let them hear your appreciation.